Hi, I'm Laura with Refund Talk by Laura, and today we are doing our Tuesday tutorial at two. And what we're going to do today is a lamp revamp. We're going to show you how the paint works on metal, and you can paint the metal lamp and the shade. So here is our before. This is what it looked like before from a thrift store. <clears throat> Not the most updated and attractive. And then here's what we turned it into. Fabulous. <clears throat> it's wonderful. So the supplies you need for the lamp revamp are a lamp and a shade. Obviously you can do a wood one. I just think it's really cool that you can do a metal one too. So, and the architecture of some of them is really, really cool. You can get lamps really inexpensively because a lot of times they're brass or um, a color that's not really popular right now. So people donate them and the architecture is really, really cool. And the style and the shape of the lamp is really, really cool. It's just the color that's outdated. So you need your lamp. You need whatever color wreath on junk paint you want. You need, if you want to, some glaze. Um, and we're going to work with some tenable glaze today and then brushes and rags. And that's all there is to it. So the first thing we're going to do is, since it's easy to take off, we're going to paint the shade. When I did this one, I'm using linen and slate for the ones that we did. Um, and I started with the slate and um, painted the shade. And I'll show you on the back side of this, I didn't do two coats. You're either going to need two coats, but you are just painting the shade. I mean, that's, there, there really is no fancy thing. You're just painting the shade. So it'll soak in a little bit and just keep going with it until you get the coverage that you want. So once it soaks in, I'm staying away from the top and the bottom because I wanted to leave them so that I could come back and paint them linen so that they blended with the base of the lamp. Um, but if you've got a dirty lampshade, <clears throat> which I don't know how a lampshade ever gets dirty, but it seems like they do sometimes. If you've got a dirty lampshade, great fix. Don't throw it away and buy another one. Lampshades can be expensive. Um, paint it. And, oh, I spilled paint. <laughs> um, way easy to do. Now, I've turned this one on right here, the one that we've already finished. Number one, because it looks so beautiful on. And number two, so I could show you that... What happens underneath doesn't really matter because if you look at that lamp see I'm just taking the brush and going if you load it with some paint you can just go right close to that edge look how fabulously perfect that is you can go Wonderful. way close to the edge I know it is good isn't it um, way close to the edge and not have to tape anything off or fool with anything like that so that is the paint the shade process it'll take a little bit longer to dry because it's fabric but it's going to be fabulous when it dries. So there's the shade. Now what happens when I'm painting the shade is that, which freaked me out at first because how do I get it on there without it? If I'm covering it well enough that it covers the shade, it's going to bleed through like that. But if you notice, it doesn't matter. You don't, I put a light bulb in there, like I said earlier, because it looks lovely, but also so that you can see that when you turn the light on, there's no weird shadows from that. It doesn't cause a problem. What does happen when you put that in there and turn it on is you'll notice places, if you look here, we got great full coverage there. Once you get the light on and you look at it, can you see, Katie, that there are some places that are, is that coming across on the camera or not? Kind of, yeah. Okay, so you'll see that there are some spots that need a little bit more paint. Um, and that's the way, I, okay, here's, oh, this is fabulous. That's horrible, look. <laughs> Okay, so you just want to come in after you turn the light on. Some things will show up that you don't see without it on and touch up those spots. And then I did get, because I'd already done my linen around the top there to trim it out, I did get a little brush to get some spots like that. But once you get a little brush and get them painted, the shade looks really cool. If you're not liking painting the whole shade, this would be a great thing Sorry, I can't paint and talk at the same time. <laughs> You'd think I could. Um, my husband thinks I can do anything and talk at the same time. Um, but if you wanted to, if it was in bad condition or if this was stained and you didn't, you know, there are options for gluing some trim on there. You know, once you've painted the middle of the shade, see, here's another section that needs a little bit more. If you can look at, oh, this one does. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So putting some trim on it would be a fun thing. Just make it beautiful. Now, what we're going to do is the same thing to the lamp because the paint sticks to metal. Um, sorry, I need to 
leave that alone. All right, so now we'll do the actual lamp. So take the finial off, which I painted the other day already. Okay, and we're gonna go with linen on this. Shake, 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 shake. Which is a really important thing no matter what you're painting. Shake, shake, shake. And then when you think you've shaken enough, shake some more. Because all the good stuff can settle in the bottom sometimes. Okay. We'll go with linen on the base. And you're going to paint it on. It'll probably take two coats on this one. But you're just going to cover the whole thing with whatever color you've chosen. Linen's nice and neutral. I think black would be really pretty too. These are kind of like buffet lamp style, so two black ones would be really cool. Then I'd change the shade color if I was doing that. But you're just going to paint. We're gonna distress it and we're gonna glaze it, but just like with furniture, there are people that ask, okay, if I'm gonna distress it, do I have to get it in all these cracks in here? Yeah, you do have to get it in all those cracks because when you distress, you take the paint off the top and if you haven't gotten it down in all the cracks, you're not gonna have the contrast you want so just make sure it gets in all these little ridges when you're painting and see like that's so not popular right now mm -hmm. that whatever that is I don't even know if that's metal I think that's probably like, some kind of laminate it's like what what did you think it was no I don't it's not even la it's not even metal is it no it's like marble look so marble it, yeah so marble so it, 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 but it'll stick, and um, since you've got, I'm sure, the idea of how we're painting the lamp, I'm going to switch to, what I do when I get up here is I just do whatever the dark color is, um, and then stop right there. I don't do the this little thing, because it doesn't show up under the shade anyway. So what now kind I do, of paint? What kind of paint? Wreath on junk, furniture paint. That's the best option, because you're not having to prime, you're not having to do anything to get it ready, it will actually stick to the metal. It sticks to amazing amount of surfaces but yes this is this is the best and you can get um, a lamp out of a sample you, you won't need to purchase more than a sample to get probably a couple lamps done so okay so there's the process for painting you're gonna sit that in front of a fan if you sit it in front of a fan it will dry a whole lot faster and you can slap that second coat on what we have done on this one is we have done our second coat back here, but then that's all we did. I'm gonna take this shade off so I can play around with the lamp. Okay, I was gonna turn it off. Woo! Okay, mm -hmm. there. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna sand the metal. Sander, this is my favorite sander. Um, doesn't have to be cordless, um, but it does have to be this shape. An orbital sander is going to give you a kickback. It's not easy to use. And the kind with the square that you put the sandpaper on and pull it over and put it in the clips will drive you to the loony bin. So this one's great. You peel that off, now we're ready to go. Velcro's fabulous. Um, so any kind of corner sander um, is perfect. And we're going to sand the metal. So in here... <laughs> Battery fell out, Mama. Yeah. That's on the blooper reel. Okay. <laughs> okay, see, can you get in here? I'm just gonna get the swirly guy. And then that whatever that one surface was, what we thought it was, some kind of laminate. Yeah. Same here. Those little guys. That's the cool architecture and you want to highlight that. Here, so any edges, any corners. Okay, and then get these real quick. Okay, see the difference? Um, when we distress it much better and then once we distress it we're going to glaze it um we have a dark glaze that looks good over all the colors and it's just called dark glaze um and what we're going to use today though it kind of has a brown tint to it 
And I didn't want to put brown on the lamp because we're going with slate, which is in the gray family. I'm trying to find my, here's a brush. I'm just this. Dust all that, um, all the paint stuff off that you got, or it's gonna get all, see down here, we got all that junk on there from sanding. Just get rid of that with a clean brush and you're ready to go. Um, so get that all off so it's clean. And then we're gonna use the Tenable Glaze because it is a clear product and you can add any of our paint colors to it to make whatever color glaze you want. So since I didn't really want brown on there, not that it would look bad, but it just looks more custom if I go ahead and match my glaze to the shade. So we're gonna do a slate glaze. And the directions are for a container like this, you'll put um, two tablespoons of paint in. I don't ever measure, so it's like two ploops. So mm -hmm. one, two, that's probably two tablespoons ish. Now, when you start using the glaze, if it's not dark enough for you, if you're thinking, oh, that's, I wanted it more slate-ish than it is, or whatever color you're using, the normal reaction is, then let me add more paint. Don't add more paint, because then you dilute the glaze properties and you don't have time to move it around. It's not gonna be a big deal on our lamp here, but if you're doing a piece of furniture, you wanna be able to smooth it across the drawers and make it look pretty, so come back after it dries and put a little bit more glaze on it, and that's how you get a richer, deeper color. Don't add more paint to this. Um, when I'm glazing, there are people that like a stain pad. You're totally, totally great with a stain pad. I'm a rag girl. So we get bunches of rags and then I cut them in fourths because one is too big and it will, a whole one, and it'll drag around. Um, my daughter Lindsay is the glaze queen. It's amazing what she can do with the glaze and how she can make it look. And she's always reminding me because my first reaction is, okay, I'm gonna glaze. Um, did you get that on camera? Do I need to do it again? Okay, I'm going to glaze, okay? She's always saying, Mom, fold it in a square. She's right, because if I fold it in a square, then I've got control. I can move it around. If I do this thing that I do, I've usually got a tail that's going to smear in the glaze and all that kind of jazz. So we're going to glaze the lamp. Um, you want your rag to be damp, not soaking wet. I put it in the water, but I'm going to wring out everything I can. If your rag's too dry, it's going to pull. And if your rag's too wet, it's going to wet the paint and take it off. So... You're going to apply it with a brush, and it's going to look like, oh my goodness, what have you done? Okay, and then you're going to use that rag to smoosh it in the cracks and make it beautiful. So we've got it on there now, and we're going to use the rag to smoosh it in the cracks and make it beautiful. You can take off as much as you want. You've got some play time. Um, if you're not liking the way it looks, you can move it around, squish it around. I, of course, am doing a phenomenal job, so I like the way it looks, mm -hmm. but um, there is time to play with it. Um, if the paint is not staying on when you glaze, you're probably using too wet a rag, or you could be glazing too soon, which I do all the time because I have absolutely no patience and I'm immediate gratification. I want to get it done. I want to see it. I'm excited. So if you have a problem and the glaze pulls the paint off a little bit, just wait a little bit till the paint dries a little more. Um, it, it needs to cure some. Drying and curing are two totally different things. Um, and here we're just going to smush around till, till we get something we like. Okay, now see, that took like almost all of it off. See the difference in that and the side where I had done it before? So you can take, you know, it'll look like it's a really dark glaze, but you can take almost all of it off. You've got control. You can do it as light as you want or as dark as you want. Okay. And what I'll probably do is smush, wet my brush just a little bit, a little tiny brush, and smush that around in there so I blend it. Because I'm having a hard time getting a rag in there without removing everything. And it's not an exact science, so it's all okay. When you get it all done, it's gonna be fabulous. Okay, we're gonna do this little spot. The longer you let it sit, the more time it has to set up, and it will stay in the spot where you put it. So if you want darker glaze, leave it for a couple minutes. If you wanna move it around, don't, um, don't sit down and watch a TV show. Go ahead and get it off there, so. All right, there we go. And let it, let it be inexact. We, we'll teach paint class and we'll have people that get a little freaked out about the glazing part. 
And I usually tell them, just give it a minute. Just keep glazing. In a minute, you're going to go, aha, and it's all going to be good. You're looking at it close up. You're looking at it closer than anybody else will. You're looking at it more critically than anybody else will. When you stand back, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. See, already, this is, oops, that's the wrong brush. Already, really pretty. So we have, when we're done, I'm not going to finish it right now, but we've got, when we're done, two really pretty buffet lamps. And we got these at the thrift store for five bucks each. So for ten dollars and a little bit of paint, you've got two way cool lamps. And it would be hard to beat that price anywhere else. So go find a lamp. You've probably got one you can redo. If not, go shopping at the thrift store, Goodwill, grab a lamp, and do a lamp revamp. Thanks so much for watching. Check out our YouTube channel. It has all the live videos that we're doing. We're moving over to our YouTube channel, so you can check them out there. If um, Did you have a question, Katie? No. Okay. Sorry. Um, if you, if you want to watch them again, because sometimes it helps to watch them while you're doing the project. Um, and then find a retailer near you. We've got 150 plus retailers that sell the products. You can find the products there. You can order online. And we're always looking for retailers. So if you want to actually be a part of the family and sell the paint, let us know that too. Thank you so much for watching. Happy rethunking.